Hey guys, it's me again, Gareth, your one and only Cosmic Toy Man. Oh, it's been a long time since I said that, hasn't it? What have I got for you this week? Well, there's some really nice classic Thundercats figures. Very nice ones. We've got a big Gundam delivery once again. And a very, very special and rare vintage Star Wars piece. Come on, let's have a look. has been a gentleman who's brought me quite a few bits and bobs in. He brought those tubs of Transformers that you saw me sorting through. He's trying to clear out his dad's stuff. His dad's one of those people that goes around car boot sales, charity shops, picks up anything that he thinks might be worth something in the future and just sticks it in a tub in the shed, in the garage, in the cellar, in the attic. You know the kind of person. He's like, we, we, we all know people like that and we've probably all done a little bit of it ourselves as well. Anyway, he brought the Transformers before with the Rock Lords as well, those awesome Rock Lords, which I still need to get round to pricing up. Uh, well, he's been back this week and he's brought me some more stuff, but one of my favourite tubs of the things that he's brought is a box full of Kaiju, including this pretty awesome knockoff or bootleg Godzilla. I've not seen this one before, like a chocolate brown or a poo brown. One of them, anyway. And there he is! Uh, our chocolate or poo brown bootleg Godzilla. Now I have had this in other colours. I've had it in black with the green tinge and the silver spines. But I've never had this uh, brown one. Loving those gorgeous blue eyes. True air and beauty, isn't he? And there is one other unofficial item as well in this little lot. And it's this little um, Lego figure. Not Lego, obviously. It's um, one of those cheap Chinese ones that you find at all the Comic Cons. And he's a cool little fella, though. Cool little fella. Zoom back out. Everything else, though, is official as official can get, at least. Anyway, we've got a Bandai Mecha Godzilla there. He's a nice one. Very nice one. Sticking with Bandai. We've got this one. Now, this isn't Godzilla. This is Ultraman. This guy's called the Red King. Strange, because he's not very red, is he? Oh, he's just killed Zeton. Another, another Ultraman character. Now, funny this, I actually picked up one of those, if you remember, from I think it was from Grimble Comics, at a toy fair a little while ago, and he's right there. The exact same one. Funny is that, isn't it? Considering the amount of um, kaiju, long vinyl figures there are out in the world, I've ended up picking up the same one again. We've got another Bandai here, Mecha King Ghidorah. He's awesome, look at that. Awesome piece, I love this one. I just love the design of the character. It's just, it's mad, it's mental. Even the idea behind it is absolutely nuts. <laughs> really, really love that guy. Uh, who else have we got? So we've got Godzilla here as well. This is a proper Godzilla. He is. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can remember. Oh, I'd rather if it'll show me. 68. 1968 Godzilla is this one. With his tag. With his tag. I like how they've done something different with the tail on this design as well to... Um, so a lot of them, the tails just stick right out at the back and you can't stand them on a shelf. 
So to put a little curve in it like that, it means it doesn't take up quite as much room on the shelf. We've got a, a much more recent one here. We've got a Funko Pop. No box. No box. I can't help thinking that repainted in some wacky neon colours, that would look quite awesome. Uh, another Funko is this Burning Godzilla Mini. I quite like him. He's quite charming. And back there, we've got the Trend Masters Mecha Godzilla. So this isn't a Japanese toy. This one is an American toy. Obviously made by China in China though. <laughs> and he still works. How cool is that? I don't know how you get him to work. I'll just turn him off and back on again. That'll do the job. There's probably a button somewhere that I'm missing. Is that it? No. I don't know how you make him work, but he works! <laughs> and then there's this handsome little chap down here as well. He's not Godzilla, but he was in with them all, and I thought I'd show him because he's he's still got some charm. He's one of those chap -may Chinese figures that you would have found in a box set with a few military guys uh, at in-store or Pound Stretcher back in the 90s and early 2000s. And he still works as well. Kind of. <laughs> awesome stuff. Love them. Love them all. You know what I'm like with Godzilla and Kaiju and everything. I do love them. And from the same guy, and personally my favourite bat from this pile of stuff that he brought in, we've got some really awesome Mars Attacks figures. These are released by Trendmasters back in 1996. We've got one there from the movie, it's the Martian Spy Girl. Uh, sadly, the Try Me feature no longer works on that one. And these ones don't have any of these though. Are just the IP Mars Attacks, they're not actually based on the film. I can't remember if these came out before or after, but we've got the Martian Trooper there with full assault body armour and Doom Tendrils. Do like how different these look in the face to the movie ones obviously based more on the original tops trading cards and they come with one of these um, floppy disk video game things as well pretty cool pretty cool and then we've got s a d a a m a or sadam what does it say? What does that stand for then? It stands for Search and Destroy Advanced Armoured Mechanism Arachnoid. Okay. And it's got those bendy legs as that as well. Pretty sweet. Very different. Night Glow Martian Spider with Snap-on Armour. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. There's the full wave as you can see on the back of the box there. It's not long since I had a full set of these movie ones though, is it? They've all gone now though. Right, let's move these out of the way because there's more behind. We've got this 12 inch Martian Trooper. This is the Martian Supreme Commander. Again, Trend Masters. Battery's also gone on this one again. I am thinking though because the tape has failed due to age on the top there and there isn't any on this side I might open it up and replace the batteries at some point we'll see we'll see um, but my favourite from this batch is the Doom Saucer this looks a whole lot of fun now again the Try Me batteries have gone on this and there's no tape on the side of the box so I decided to open it up so we could have a little look at it and take out the rotten batteries so, let's have a proper look at this thing. In 1996, Trendmasters acquired the toy license for Mars Attacks. 
Obviously that year we also got a pretty cool movie! What is that? White House is coming out live. My fellow Americans, this is a momentous occasion. It is profoundly moving to know there is intelligent life out there. Alien life. And our world will never feel quite the same again. Once you believe. Martians. Please come to Earth, please. Once you rise above fear. Annihilate! Kill! Kill! Let's not be too rash. Then you'll be invited. Hi there. Are you interested in the White House? To meet with a new people. It's so perfect that it's happening at the beginning of the new millennium. More powerful than the might of America. I'll tell you one thing, they ain't getting the TV. More advanced than the brains of Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be a cultural misunderstanding. But be prepared for a few changes to what we know and love. <laughs> I'm Jones, right? It ain't on you, you all. As we must learn to dance. Girls, get out! To a new tune. Jack Nicholson. Whoa. Why can't we all just get along? Glenn Close. Kick the crap out of them. Pierce Brosnan. What, in your view, are some of the things that the Martians can teach us, Professor? Quite a lot about Mars, I expect, Natalie. That means I Danny DeVito. You want to conquer the world? You're gonna need lawyers, right? And Annette Bening. I think they've come to save us. From director Tim Burton. Hey, we all make mistakes, Mr. President. Mars attacks. Not anymore. We're going to take charge of this thing. Always a favourite of mine is that movie. I absolutely love it. One of the toys that Trendmasters brought us was this pretty cool Doom Saucer. It features blazing lights. It's two toys in one with detachable micro saucer fires four night glow missiles and two doom discs canopy opens to reveal two martian pilots and it's glow in the dark oh my god i want it i've got to have it also features martian battle sounds so we've seen the front of the box what does the back look like you can open the canopy to reveal blazing lights, removable night glow Martian pilot, detachable attack vehicle cockpit and pilot. Fires two discs, two toys in one detachable attack ship. Fires two night glow missiles, removable night glow Martian pilot. Ooh. Now the Try Me feature doesn't work on this one at the moment because the batteries must have long since died. But this box did come to me with one of the tape seals missing. In fact, it doesn't even look like it's ever had the tape on there. But that means that we can take it out or we can change those batteries over and we can have a little look at it, can't we? Oh yes. And there we have it one mars attacks doom saucer how cool is that yeah me like it me like it loving that blue and pink coloring there there's a bit of weathering going on from all the battles it's been through and all the space debris that's hit it as it's been whizzing through space I do like it. I do, I do, I do. So they come forward to enter attack mode and release the cannons. Give it an extra little look. 
Now, the missiles do come sealed in their little poly bag, so I don't want to open it up and, well, spoil the fact that it's sealed there. Uh, so is that extra pilot as well. And whatever else that little black thing is in there as well. I'm guessing those green parts are the glow in the dark, the night glow missiles. That's what it's talking about, isn't it? So, yeah, we've got that. There we are. Awesome stuff. Now, I've put new batteries in it. And it makes noises. Let's have a little listen. It's not the most conveniently placed button, to be fair. Hey, several sound effects there. Yeah, the button is right there. It's a little bit hard to see what you're doing when it's um, it's, it's the right way up. Uh, so yeah, lovely little piece is this. I like it anyway. Uh, as for this button, what does that do? Is that... I don't know what that does. I'm guessing that is what releases the second saucer. There we go. That's it. And obviously the pilot that's in that baggie is what would be riding this little jet ski. <laughs> it looks like a space jet ski, doesn't it? I like it. It's a pretty cool toy is that, I can see lots of play features in that. You might be able to tell from my past videos that I kind of like spaceships. You know, Manta Force being my favourite toy of all time. Uh, I can see this being one of the villains that you would have had to fly and fight against. Yeah, me liking this. I am indeed. What do you guys think? Does it tickle your pickle? Hey? Does it act? Yo, eh, eh. <laughs> and I suppose we had better take a look at this week's delivery. Yes, that is another great big box full of Gundam. I believe. So we'll tackle the diamond delivery first. We've got Detective Comics, Green Arrow, that variant cover and the flash one to go with it. Harley Quinn, pretty cool variant of it. They're knocking it out of the park recently with these variant covers, aren't they? Uh, Marvel, we've got Venom, Separation Anxiety, the third issue. Second issue of Venomverse Reborn. Captain America issue 11 and because I'm not perfect and I did miss this customer's order there's issue 8 Deadpool Wolverine World War 3 very clever timing this three part series to end the week that the movie comes out very clever now I've got a full set of those available Darth Vader Army of Darkness Forever from Dynamite Image Comics and we've got No One issue 10 Rook Exodus, issue 4. King Spawn, issue 36. Spawn kills every spawn. First issue. IDW, we've got Godzilla vs. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2, issue 4. And the brand spanking new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. Manga, we've got Jealousy Blinds Love. And customer order here, we've got the fantastic paintings of Frazetta, the one and only Frank Frazetta. And I'm not going to flick through it because that's not quite fair on the customer who definitely needs to get first look at these wonderful images. 
And finally, a non-comic or book related item, we've got a Funko Pop. It's the Venom that they owed me from a couple of weeks ago. And from Games Workshop we've got the latest issue of White Dwarf. And on to the Gundams! Look at that stack! Look at that stack! Right, okay, let's have a look at these then. Bring them forward so that I can get to them and move them back as we go. Right, all high grade, apart from the odd one or two. We've got Providence Gundam from Seed. Oh, that one's different, isn't it? I'm not seeing one with that um, thing on its back. Cool. Also Seed, we've got Buster Gundam. He's ready for war, isn't it? Another Seed, we've got Blitz Gundam. I love how unique each of these designs are. Got an entry grade here, the RX-93 V Gundam. Awesome. And Charles Zagok. Look at that, a tenner. It's no money at all. Brilliant stuff. There's quite a few of that one. Another seed one, we've got the Perfect Strike Gundam. Looks like that one's got feathers sticking out the back of it, doesn't it? Got the Double X. Don't know what that's from. Sure, I got one off uh, Timu that's in different colours, but it's very, very similar to that one. Mine's all grey and black, I think. No yellow on it. Oh, the origin! If you haven't seen the origin, you need to see it. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Go watch it. We've got Char's Z Zaku 2, the red comet version. And obviously. To go with it, you need, or to go against it, really, you need the RX-7802, the original Gundam. Yeah, I think I'll be having one of those. I haven't got an RX-7802 myself yet. Uh, we've got the Jigen, 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 how you pronounce it, I don't know. Like I say, very unique designs, all of them. Reborn Gundam. Oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? But the Death Scythe, which I think a lot of 90s kids will recognise that one. I remember this being quite big at the time. Even if you had no interest in Gundam, which I didn't, you knew what this one was, you'd seen it everywhere. Strike Rouge IWSP, whatever that is, I have no idea. But that's from Seed as well, by the look of it. This is a cool one. They're, they're all cool, but this one's pretty sweet. Uh, this one you get the RX-78-2, the original OG in there, and the G-Armor G-Fighter as well. So that's a much deeper box because there's a lot more in it. Look at what you get. Nice stuff. And we've got the Dual Gundam, also from Seed. Assault Shroud. Again, very unique design compared to the others. There's one more. There's one more great big bad boy. We've got another perfect grade. Oh, look at that one. Good size difference. Look at it. 
Unicorn Gundam Full Psycho Frame Prototype Mobile Suit. Some nice foil on the box there as well. Sadly, it doesn't show you a great deal on the back. There is a nice image on the side to show you what this one actually is. Again, it's another one of those highly recognisable ones to kids of the 90s, early 2000s. We've seen this one before. And that's it for this week's delivery. And our next batch is a classic, iconic 80s IP. Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats. Oh! We've got a lovely little lot of the MattyCollector.com. Thundercats. Obviously, we've got Lionel, you've just seen him. And there he is. What a closer look at him. These are great figures, really, really are cool. They're on par with those Masters of the Universe figures that Matty did back in the early 2000s. Well, early, mid 2000s. Nice artwork on the back there. Tells you a little bit about the character and absolutely cool sculpt. So good that I believe that now that Super 7 have taken over doing these, I think they've used pretty much the same sculpt for some of these. Panther. There he is. He's really nice. I think Panther, when I was a kid, I think he was my favourite. It's hard thinking back so far but I'm fairly sure that he was my favourite when I was a kid. Again, cool artwork on the back. A little description of his character, I believe. And those are still sealed, by the way. Now we've got Jackalman. This one has been opened, and I believe the next one has as well. Pumira, Pumira, I can't remember how you pronounce her name. But yeah, I think this is another one that uh, Super 7 have just reissued and considered it as good as what they're putting out at the moment. For considerably more money, I will add. I can't even look at this, these without hearing the theme tune in my head. Pumira, 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 whatever it is, you know what I'm on about, you know what I'm saying. Or trying to say. <laughs> yeah, this one has been opened as well. And there was also this one, but this one doesn't have the black box. We've got Mumra. Mumra, the ever living. <laughs> I like this one. I, I like all of them to be fair, but I, I think I like this one enough that I would have it in my own collection. Very cool, very nice. Yeah, awesome batch of figures right there. And this next little batch I actually bought off a Facebook group, uh, well a seller on a Facebook group, uh, quite reasonably priced so I thought I'd give them a go. I did have them when they first came out but they've gone and I never reordered any more stock so I'm giving them another go. It's the D&D figures from NECA! 
and I believe this is all of the actual figures that they've done so far. Now I know they've done variants of these on sort of like card backs and things like that, but um, as far as I'm aware these are the only four actual different figures that they've brought out so far. Uh, so we've got Zarek, Warduke, Strongheart and Grimswood. Grimswood or Grimsword? One or, one or the other. It's them four anyway. Let's have a little look at them all. all right, Zarak first is some kind of little goblin, isn't it? Really sweet looking figures these are. Come with plenty of hands and accessories. Excuse the glare. Hello! Yes, you can see me. Uh, but there he is. He's got a right charming face, hasn't he? Very cool figure. I'm going to be saying very cool all the time again, aren't I? Uh, there we go. There's War Duke. Uh, I love the metallic blue on his helmet. I think that's really, really catching, is that? Really eye catching. Nice sword uh, flame effect for the sword there. Another cool one. The only thing these do seem to have suffered is these hooks on the boxes have all sort of like bent over, possibly when the guy packs them. Strongheart, your typical knight in shining armour. Again, awesome looking figure. Comes with a soft goods cape as well, does that one? stuff and last but not least we've got Grimsword and actually this I say not least this is probably my least favorite of the four nothing wrong with him I'm just I think I prefer all the other ones over this I think it's the character design to be fair still cool though still very cool I do like the snake head on the shield. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Long, long before we had the vintage collection, we had the vintage original trilogy collection. And they came in these fan dabby dozy little protector cases. Well, someone brought me five of those in this week. I quite like these. I always have them. And these are what led the way to the vintage collection. So there were 12 of these in the entire series. Four of them on Star Wars cards, four of them on Empire cards, and four of them on Return of the Jedi. No Star Wars here, just a mix of Empire and Jedi. We've got Darth Vader. We've got Chewie. We've got R2-D2, who's quite a popular one. We've got Lando, who's sort of like a lesser popular one. And Lando's the only one with any kind of damage. He's got some slight fading, as you can see, some slight yellowing to his torso. I always find it strange how that happens. It's because they use a different kind of plastic, isn't it? And the best of the bunch, as always, we've got the Fett himself. He's a nice one, isn't he? You've got to love the original card art. It's still the best of the lot, isn't it? And the backs are even like the TV seat as well. And you know I often leave anything special for the end of the episode when I get something that is just so big or so awesome or so particularly valuable. I tend to leave those, the, 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 the best bits, the best, I tend to say till last. Well. This is it, we've got a vintage Star Wars piece to show you and it needs to be put in this cabinet. We've got the Kenner 
Vintage, Diecast, Tie Bomber. Now that's a very, very nice piece. The TIE Bomber is the rarest of the die-cast line, and only a few survive still sealed in their boxes today. The TIE Bomber was only released in the US in relatively small numbers, and it is thought that its minor role in The Empire Strikes Back led to poor sales and a cancellation of the product in 1981. The TIE Bomber was at a larger scale than all by the die-cast Landspeeder and oddly was piloted by an Imperial Stormtrooper in Hoth battle gear. The early prototypes were in grey with a change to white occurring later in the design process. Both the production and the prototype bombers were very detailed even having red and green painted rear lights. Like the TIE and the Darth Vader TIE, it had removable plastic wings as an action feature. The TIE Bomber was released a significant time after the other Series 2 ships and was only ever retailed in an Empire Strikes Back box. There is much debate over whether the TIE Bomber was only released as a test run of 75,000 in stores surrounding Kenner's headquarters in Cincinnati, Ohio. However, good evidence for sales of the TIE Bomber in a range of stores across numerous states indicates a wider market than expected for a test run or for a store exclusive. Perhaps the legend of the TIE Bomber is a result of it being the only ship released in the Empire Strikes Back 11B box. The other larger sized die-cast ships were released in updated Star Wars packaging for the Empire Strikes Back release. As you can see this particular model is in a rather nice condition and it's very rare that these pop up for sale at all, let alone in such good condition. When they do show up, you often find them with wings missing or damaged or with the plastic parts broken or featuring other damage. Obviously, you usually find paint wear as well and this one is in particularly nice condition. Near Mint. This is a very nice little model. Very, very rare. Only flaw that I can particularly find with it is this extra yellowing here, this little blemish. Obviously there is very slight yellowing to the plastic. But come on, this is from 1980. And so I'm very happy to add this to the collection, I'm going to say. If someone makes me the right offer on this, then I might sell it. But as it happens, I'm quite happy to put this in here with these carded figures that also are not for sale. And who knows? Maybe having the rarest piece in the die cast collection will encourage me now to get a complete die cast collection. That's 
Very me is that. Anyway, let's put it in its new home. Oh yes, very, very nice. Well, thank you all for watching yet another episode of What's New at Cosmic Toys. Hope you enjoyed it. And remember to give us the thumbs up, subscribe, ring that ding on if you haven't already. And we'll catch you again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.